Hello, good evening. My name is Dan McMahon and I want to, I'm Director of Marketing here at Goodspeed and I want to welcome all of you to our first Ember Insider event of 2021. And I personally am happy to say 2021 and know that 2020 is behind us and I think basically everyone in the world agrees with that. <laughs> Um, tonight, we're here so you can get to know our new leaders. Um, as you probably know, Michael Gennaro retired at the end of the year, and our board decided to change our leadership model from one executive director to an artistic director and a managing director. And so they're both here with us tonight. Donalyn Hilton, our new artistic director, who many of you know, but some may not, and David Bird, our new managing director. So let's bring them in and get started. There you are. Hi. Hi, good evening. <laughs> right there for a second. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. It's We're good new to, see to the Zoom, Dan. So <laughs> it's my first Zoom event. If you can. I don't believe that one. <laughs> no, I wish. Hey, <laughs> David. Hi, Donna Lynn. It's great to see you. Dan, good, good to, to see you as well. Too. Nice to see you too. You're both dressed up tonight, too. You look hey, very you nice. Know, for the oh, only the best for our members. Right. That's right. right. Hey, you know, we don't want, I don't want to waste any time. So I want to get started right into it so they can okay. get to, everyone can get to know you. Um, we've got a lot of people listening. And if you have questions, I believe, because I can't see it on my screen, but I believe you, I believe you there's a Q&A button at the bottom and you can um, type in that and we'll get the questions. So let's start at the very beginning with the basics. <laughs> and, like both of you, Donald and David, where are you from and how did you get into this business? This crazy business. Uh, ladies first, David? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I was born and raised in Caswell County, North Carolina. Um, tiny rural community, tobacco farming community. Um, if you didn't farm, you cared about farming. Um, and it is probably really unusual that I ended up in this business and probably really unusual that I have, have made it to where I have made it, honestly. Um, I, I credit that, I think, most likely to a, a one teacher in high school who um, arrived from UNC Chapel Hill and said, you know what, these kids need a theater program and set about giving us one. And he was really only there for, I don't know, three to five years maybe, but he was there for my formative years and he made us a theater program. And thanks to him, truly, I found my place, you know, um, and went on to East Carolina University where I studied theater. I have a, a BFA in acting and directing from the School of Theater and Dance at East Carolina and, uh, and have been working ever since. Began my professional career as a stage manager of musical theater and opera. Uh, landed at Goodspeed a long, long time ago and uh, have worked my way through the organization from there. And David, uh, you have similar beginning, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we do. And, you know, and, and like Donna Lynn, uh, not only the North Carolina connection, which I'll get to in just a moment, but also the theater educator connection. You know, I mean, I, some of us, so many of us who are yeah. in the business really had that, that educator who just lit the fire in us uh, to be in this industry. And, and I, so I, I too credit educators way back. So I also grew up in North Carolina. Uh, these things are too funny. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, the capital, and uh, ended up going to uh, undergraduate uh, school at uh, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. So in the same system as, as Donna Lynn's al alma mater. Uh, you know, and I, again, this is where those educators are really important. I actually started undergrad, I don't know if you know this, Donalyn, mm -hmm. uh, as a BFA theater education major. I so know very I, little I, about oh, you, David. I know. <laughs> Here we go. We're, Here we we're go. dating, yes. Uh, so I started <laughs> as an ed major. I was going to teach uh, high school students from them. And uh, I, I've told this story to some, but I, I you know, uh, arrived at the, you know, second semester of my junior year uh, actually, the, the first semester of my junior year before I was due to student teach and had this crisis of conscience and said, wait a second, I don't think I want to teach high school kids. And uh, so luckily, I was surrounded by an incredible faculty who saw promise in me and helped me find my path. Uh, there was a small regional theater opening in downtown Greensboro on Main Street, and it, which had been long blighted. Uh, in a former Montgomery Ward's department store that gutted the building, 
I turned it into a three quarter thrust theater. It's a theater called Triad Stage. It's still there. Uh, and I was there and able to work with them for their inaugural season. I would come back and work with them later. It's also where I produced my very first professional musical. So, uh, you know, it has a really soft spot in my heart. Uh, I feel very fortunate, again, not only for that faculty, but being in a community that supports the arts, you know, and I know that um, that's one of the things, not to skip too far ahead, but that I'm most excited about yeah. uh, in coming to East Haddam. So I know we'll get to that in a little bit, but that's a little bit of how I started uh, in this business. I love the thread that both of you were influenced by educators. I was too. And I think that's common among a lot of us yeah. in this business. And so all of you who are out there who are teachers, thank you. Thank you yes. for all you're doing, especially yeah. now. Especially <laughs> now. Especially Absolutely. now. Yes. Donald, and I'm sure that the audience would like to hear a little bit more about your path within Good Speed. I mean, it's 30 yeah. some years and you didn't wake up one day and you were the artistic. Right? I did not. <laughs> no, who'd have thunk it? Um, yeah, so I, so my, my, my connection with Goodspeed goes back to 1985, actually, when my then boyfriend, now husband of, of 33 years, um, came to Goodspeed as the master electrician. Um, and I very clearly remember coming up that summer to visit him. I was freelance stage managing wherever I was that summer. And I came up to see him and I, I sat on the steps up in the balcony, which, which many of us have done uh, who work at Goodspeed to, to take in a bit of a show or an entire show. And uh, I sat on the step in the balcony house left and it was a production of Fiorello. And I remember how just overwhelming that beautiful show in that magnificent intimate space was. And I remember thinking, you know, I want to be a part of that. Mm. I truly had no idea that one day I would have this opportunity. Um, but I knew almost from the first moments I was in the building, what a special place it was, what a special community it was, um, and that I wanted to be a part of it. So I joined Goodspeed full-time in 1988 as the assistant stage manager at the Opera House. Um, and, and three years later, Goodspeed's very um, famous production of The Most Happy Fella moved to New York and our production stage manager at the time moved with it. I was given the opportunity to move up into that position. I think I held that position for 19 years, um, give oh. or take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, Sue Frost, our longtime associate producer, re um, moved on to New York herself and um, and we didn't replace her right away. We had our touring initiative. We had an associate producer in Bob Allwine, but the touring piece was a big part of what Bob was doing. And, and Michael hadn't replaced Sue. And there was an impact to that. And I went in to talk to Michael. I needed to have a conversation with him. And I went in and I said, Michael, you know, you have to replace Sue, don't you? And he said, I've been thinking about it. And I think maybe it's time for you to step up. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? Because <laughs> I was good at my job. I had a great job and I was good at it. You were um, excellent. Thank you, thank you. And I loved it, I loved it. And so I came home and I said to Jay, oh my goodness, I've opened a Pandora's box. But <laughs> but I decided that it, you know, for good speed, it was the right move for me. So I began, line producing was my title at that point, um, eventually moved under Michael Gennaro's tenure to, to being the sole producer for good speed and and when he made, when he told us that he was going to retire, which we learned last February, I believe, you know, I, I just knew immediately that I wanted this job, um, mm -hmm. that I wanted to take everything that I know, you know, for 19 years, I sat in the room with our audience, eight performances a week, you know, I have a very, very intimate relationship with our audiences and with the work we put on our stage. And I just knew immediately that I wanted to go for this, that I wanted to put all of that to work and um, and try to get this job. I will take this opportunity to say they made me work for it. <laughs> Two interviews, okay. and I think they checked my references, but that's okay. That's okay. It's all It was great. a long process. The board formed a search committee, mm -hmm. and um, they the pandemic started complicated in the everything. summertime. Yes, of course. Yeah. So everything had to be done by Zoom, but that went from July until December. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah. So and you know, I really... will tell you that <laughs> the the candidates that were in that room for both of these positions were the cream of the crop for the entire country. And so, all of you out there, rest assured, we really have the best people. In Thank case you, you doubt it. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> yeah. So, so I like to think that you know, I I started on the assembly line, 
and here, you know, and here I am. Yeah. And, and David, I, tell us about add, your path. Yeah. I was just going to add really quickly too that, you know, for those of you in the audience who have worked with or witness the work of stage managers, you know how central they are to our work. And um, I think it, it says a lot about um, the, the board's intentions in tapping Donna Lynn in a lot of ways. But, uh, but I've got to say selfishly, I'm thrilled to work with Donna Lynn because I know her pedigree uh, as a stage manager and I know what that's gonna mean uh, for our organization going forward. So thank you, David. Bye. All right, so David, now about you. Yeah. So you you were a triad stage. How did you get to, to good speed? How, yeah, no, it's a great. So I'll, I'll, I'll three I'll, minutes I'll, or less. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, <laughs> so. I know. Exactly. Uh, so I will try to give you the, the, the quick version. So I tried stage was founded by two uh, Yale School of Drama graduates, actually. And so it was my time there that I was introduced, uh, particularly, uh, in particular, rather, to the managing director's role in work. And, you know, I, I started working there right out of grad, um, undergrad, and, and I didn't know that I was going to go to grad school. Uh, I was the first in my family to graduate with a four-year degree, certainly would have been the first and was um, to pursue graduate work. Um, but it was that relationship. Uh, that uh, initially got me to Connecticut the first time. So, uh, so I did attend the Yale School of Drama where I received my MFA in theater management. So that was Connecticut round one. Um, and it was a tremendous experience. And of course, that's when I first, you know, I had certainly heard of Goodspeed. Uh, it's notoriety, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, precedes it. But uh, being in the state and being able to see work and to know artists who were working uh, at Goodspeed was very impactful. Um, and getting to hear Michael Price speak, uh, well, you know, uh, on occasion at the drama school was great as well, uh, at grad himself. Uh, and then, uh, you know, after graduate school, I actually moved back to North Carolina to try at stage to be their first general manager. So they wooed me back. So it was this up and down the East Coast thing for, for a little while. Um, eventually, you know, I landed in uh, Connecticut again when I uh, took over duties as director of marketing at the Westport Country Playhouse. So, you know, I, I feel like I know a lot about the, you know, Connecticut's flagship producing theaters. Um, I will say I am uh, also thrilled to join a cohort um, at a time when there's been such massive change uh, in leadership, you know, across the cohort. Uh, and such really dynamic individuals, primarily women, which is really important for our free field. Uh, you know, so so I'm really excited about moving back to Connecticut. It, there's there's something about it. It feels a little bit like a homecoming, you know, in some ways, and yeah. um, that's, that's really really so exciting. When, family. when will you and your husband move here? And and do you think you'll live in East Tatum, or have you? Yeah. Been, have you no, yes, I'm very interested in this answer too. Yes, you are right. <laughs> uh, so so the, the the quick answer is. Uh, for, for the first part, we don't really know yet. This whole pandemic thing is making things a little complicated. Um, but by by end of spring, absolutely, we will be uh, residing in uh, East Haddam. That's our goal, to be in East Haddam. And of uh, course, it doesn't matter quite yet because we're no one's working no. built. Right. We're all definitely. working home. It's true. And we, we've you know been engaging this way and it's working very fruitfully. You know, I will say we... It, you know, collaboration is at the very center of our work, no matter where you are, whether it's in the boardroom, whether it's in the lobby as we're greeting you know, <laughs> patrons, whether it's, you know, having conversations like this with our members, um, but certainly working as a team. So I know that we all, I think I can speak for, for the staff, um, that, and the two of you would probably agree that, you know, we long to actually be in the same room together. Uh, so that'll happen in time when it's safe and appropriate to do so. But that being said, you know, back to the community piece, you know, I believe that our theaters are this, you know, the, the heartbeat of our communities. And uh, I know that's the, the, the truth for, for Goodspeed and East Haddam. And so it's important to me and it's important to my family to, to be embedded in that community. I want to run into members at the coffee shop. You know, I want to run into folks as we're getting our dry cleaning or certainly on the porch. You know, that's something I've, I've always really enjoyed about being a managing leader is being in the lobby and shaking hands and saying hello and checking in on folks' families. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the day when we can do that again. Yeah. yeah, I think we all are. Yeah, and you know, can we step back for a second? And you two will be working together as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, and can can one of you explain to the to our members what it really means? I mean, having Michael Gennaro or Michael Price's executive director, everyone got, but now mm -hmm. we're splitting that job and have two people in charge. And how does that work? 
David, you go first. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, so the, the dual report model is actually very common. You know, I mean, when you look at the landscape of uh, American regional theater, I would say that there's actually more of this model than there is the former. Um, and I think that, you know, that's obviously a very conscious choice uh, on the board's part to, to split the role. It's a lot. It's a lot for one person to do, you know, especially in the changing landscape, not, you know, certainly in the midst of a pandemic, but even beyond mm -hmm. uh, that. And, and, you know, I think it's really important uh, for uh, an artistic and a managing leader to quite literally hold hands, you know, I mean, to, to not be in silos, but, you know, a big part of my work will be supporting Donna Lynn's vision. And a big part of Donna Lynn's work, not to put words in your mouth, Donna Lynn, but is, was, but is to, to help with my work as well. And, yes. You know, when we are back in the office, Donalyn and I have talked about this, you know, the, the opportunity to, to go into Donalyn's office and plop down on the couch and talk about an idea or brainstorm or dream about a project that we want to work on that we feel is going to be advantageous for our organization, you know, that's, that's going to be a common occurrence. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Is that, yeah. is that, is that fair? Well, yeah. Donalyn, yeah. how are the roles split? So people understand what you're- Well, so my doing. function is primarily artistic. Of mm -hmm. course, there is, you know, fiscal responsibility as part of that job. Um, but my role is primarily artistic. David's is primarily management and mm -hmm. finance, and we will share fundraising duties. Correct. Yeah. So you'll pick the seasons and David will find the money and make it work. Yeah, but yeah. we have to do it together. You know, I, I, it will right. be a com as it as it always has been or as it certainly has been in, during my time at Goodspeed in a, in a senior manager position at Goodspeed. There are many voices involved in the determining of a season. Uh, yes, it, I, I will ultimately have, I guess, veto power, but but that's not a, you know, that a heavy hand is not a road to success in a, in a business that requires collaboration. And so we will talk about every, every idea I have, every dream of something I want to put on the stage, every new piece that I want to develop, every revival that I want to undertake. It's going to be important that David be as excited about it as I am excited. And yeah. And have either of you, have you met each other in person yet? <laughs> we have not. We haven't. We have a date. We're going to meet in person, social distance and masks and everything, um, mid morning on Monday. So you'll yeah. hear a roar come from East Haddam. Um, <laughs> we've so been talking like story, this though. since or, since late uh, late December, but we have not met. Yeah. Yet. So we've been in the same oh, room before. Yes. We realized. So yes. we both have served on uh, the negotiating team for the League of Residents, uh, League of Resident Theaters, Lort, and. Uh, we're on the same team. It was a largest team. There were a lot yeah. of a lot of people in yeah. the room at the time. And I remember seeing Donna Lynn, um, and I knew that she was associated with with Good Speed. But for whatever reason, and I, I don't know why, um, we we didn't really have an opportunity to engage. So it, it's funny that we've literally been in the same space, uh, but but still it is it is. And I didn't remember you, which is yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, was yeah. it that we'll talk about it later? Yeah, yeah I want to find out exactly which negotiation it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. There have been so many, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, Donalyn, you've been getting a lot of press recently being, about being the first woman to lead good. Because I have a good PR director. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. But I, what does that really mean to you? I mean, uh, it means saw a lot. the Hartford Current on Sunday that with that spread, it was amazing. But but what does that really mean to you? It means a lot to me, um, and particularly in this moment, to join that group of women. And if you didn't look at the Hartford Current on Sunday, I urge you to go find that article and, and just really understand um, what a sea change has taken place in, in Connecticut theater, in theaters all across the country. But I think that we can now say with, with some things that have happened um, in the last 10 months, we can say that Connecticut is leading this work now um, to, um, to build gender diversity in the top tiers of the regional theater, which has been a big issue for a long time. And um, it, so it means a lot to me, you know, I've, I've said in other interviews, it, Goodspeed may have always been led by a man until quite recently, but Goodspeed has always been powered by women. I mean, in my history, in my 30, you know, nearly 35 year mm -hmm. experience at Goodspeed, women have been critical to the success of this organization. And both Michael Price and Michael Gennaro valued the, the female voices around them um, and empowered them. And, um, and so it, it's not 
surprising. It took a while, you know, but, but Goodspeed has always been driven by women. And so it's really exciting for me to, to be in this position. Now I feel really honored and I really feel the, the weight of it in a, in a wonderful way. Um, and I will say it gives me hope for the gen, for the racial diversity work that we must do. Absolutely. Um, this is a huge conversation in our industry right now appropriately so and so looking at what has happened in the Connecticut theater in a very short period of time you know it gives me I know we can do this too I know that we can build racial diversity across not only good speed but our, our the regional theater and theater world absolutely great and David now you have the responsibility of leading the financial side of things yeah which is never easy in a theater yeah, yeah. and now coming out of the pandemic is just yeah. too Let's throw that in for difficult fun, right? yeah, yeah. Any, I know you haven't really even started full time with this, but any early thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's a tough time that we're living in. I mean, you know, I've talked about this uh, in, in recent interviews and, and and certainly with staff as well that, you know, not only are we, you know, suffering through this together professionally, but we're also carrying this personally. You know, this this is this pandemic has been an equal opportunity offender. You know, we are all impacted by this, and uh, and that you know can't be lost on us. Um, is it hard for our organizations, particularly for nonprofits? Absolutely. But you know what's helping us get through this are the folks that are on this call. I mean, the, the, the members that have stepped up and said, you know what, I know I haven't seen something on the stage in a while and I, and I really want to, um, but it's also important to me to support the work of this organization going forward. Um, and so we're, we're spending a lot of time um, already, you know, thinking you know, through the plans for the future, um, those from a season standpoint, certainly, but also from a fiscal standpoint, you know, that, you know, we, we've said before that, you know, during this time, the planes are grounded, right? And this is the time when we can be introspective and try to fix the planes, you know, and, and to Donalyn's point just now about the, the work and the, the sphere of equity, diversity, and inclusion, we are being very forward thinking on that and spending a lot of time uh, working on, on that work and actually doing the work. Um, but the same can be applied to, um, to the, the physical health of our organization as well. You know, we want to come out of this stronger. We want to be brave. We want to be bold. And we want to move forward. You know, we want to present the, the highest caliber musical theater experiences that, that our audiences have come to know and expect. And we will. You know, and we will do so from a place of great health. So that's, that's what lies ahead for good speed. And then we're doing the work now. Great, great. And, you know, now the question that everyone's been waiting to hear, I think that's why they all tuned in. And, oh, I and hear I've my seen, mother calling me. Yeah. <laughs> right. I've seen You're questions right there, in the chat, <laughs> but what is the 2021 season going to look like? Yeah. Um, I think this is for you. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it because I've been thinking about it since last March 15th. Um, and I, I wish that I had a crystal ball and I could tell you what it is. You know, uh, right now we are offering a subscription to a two show season, South Pacific and Anne of Green Gables. And we remain committed to those two projects. Um, South Pacific was ready to go into rehearsal literally the day after we shut down. Um, and Anne of Green Gables is one of the most exciting new musicals that I have been involved with. I don't think I've said this publicly since I heard the first notes of Come From Away. Wow. So take that to heart, people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good, exciting musical. It is gonna surprise people. It's a dance show, you know. So we are committed to both of those projects. Realistically, it's not looking promising right now that we will be able to, I think most importantly, be back in rehearsal um, safely in time to, to make our season happen the way that, that it, we had be, have been intending, um, but we don't know that yet. So those projects are still on track. At the same time, we are developing plans to be outside if that becomes necessary. Mm -hmm. um, that's really all I can say right now because the key to uh, you know so many conversations about that with with our staff, with colleagues at other theaters, flexibility is the big word you know pivot was the word of 2020 for me flexibility is going to be the word for 2021 so uh you know we our audience is going to have the opportunity to attend a good speed performance in 2021 um if i have to lie cheap egg or steal um but but i can't i can't promise you what that's going to be yet but but we will be back okay and 
what do you think will change about good speed in the future or what will stay the same i'm we're getting a lot of questions you know are we going to do the three show season are we mm-hmm. going to do musicals you 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 walk out happy about like you know that 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 quintessential good speed or is everything going to change now because we have brand new people everything's not going to change and and i think you know as i said earlier i know i know good speed really well um, and I've known it for a long time well. So I've I've experienced transition at Good Speed. Um, and nobody loves what our audience loves on stage more than I do. Um, so I, you know, my hope is that we will, we have to evolve. I mean, the world's evolving. We have to evolve. But there's there's a lot of great revival work for us still to do. There are a lot of shows we've talked about for a long time that we have not yet had the opportunity to revive. And there's a lot of new work that is perfect for our audience. Dance musicals, um, you know, projects like New Work Holiday Inn that mm-hmm. that we brought to good speed. Um, so there's, people don't have to be afraid of what we're going to give them. They're going to be entertained. Um, they're going to have dance, they're going to have comedy. Every now and then we may come across something that we think is important enough and good enough that Goodspeed needs to be involved with it that we may ask you to, to lean in a little bit for. Um, but, but it will be the Goodspeed you know and love because it's a Goodspeed I have known and loved. It is the reason I wanted the job. Yeah. And we will remain Goodspeed musicals, right? Because I know that Absolutely. we had some questions in the box office. I yeah. don't know how to produce plays. Yeah, right. And, <laughs> you know, the other thing to, to add into the new work piece, mm-hmm. I'll come back to the musical piece too, is, you know, think about this time we're living in. You know, when you look at the course of history and you look at major, you know, moments of renaissance and art, um, it's come out of difficult times, you know, times of strife and struggle, you know, and we, ha- how many artists do we know? How many artists do our members know? Uh, have, have they seen that they haven't seen in so many you know months now almost, you know a year um you know all that pent up creative energy it's it's not just pent up people are actually creating and uh, they're having to do it in very different ways you know we've been able to innovate you know i know that a lot of our members have taken part in some of our digital offerings which are really incredible will some of that stick around i certainly hope so because i think it's really really wonderful work yeah and complements what we'll be doing on our stages. Right. Uh, but I think, you know, looking ahead, uh, I'm excited about the work that we actually don't know yet, you know, and, oh. and, and what's really uh, great about an organization like ours is that we have our finger on the pulse of those artists. We know, um, you know, colleagues that are creating work and I think it's gonna be really impactful and really important. Yeah. You know, on the on the musical piece, I mean, who, who doesn't love a musical? You know, I mean, that, you know, that that was part of what was exciting about this opportunity uh, when it became, you know, a, a available, uh, you know, in terms of my candidacy. I said, man, you know, I, the very first experience I ever had of attending a live theatrical experience was a musical. You know, the very, you know, one of the first uh, productions that I ever produced, I, you know, mentioned this earlier, was a musical. Uh, you know, so it's something that's important to to my DNA, um, and, and it certainly is central to the DNA of good speed. So, so absolutely, we'll see yeah. musicals going forward. Hey, Donalyn, we have a couple questions about the future of the, the Terrace Theater and the festival. Yep. Um, I think that both are critical. The, you know, we, had, we have established um, a pipeline for the development of new work. Um, and, and much of that work has come onto the Goodspeed stage. And you know, we produced nine, I think it's at last count, nine shows that came out of the Mercer Grove through the festival, not all of them at the festival, but from the Mercer Grove through the festival onto either the Terrace stage or the Opera House stage. So we really have put the energy, the resource, um, the financial resource and the people resource into creating a pipeline. And so it's, I think it's very important that we maintain that pipeline. Now, realistically, we are not gonna be able to do everything the day we open. Reopen, um, but all of those, all of that work exists for a reason, and I, it is important to me that we continue to um, maintain those commitments. Um, the we, we were planning to launch a, a new development program at the terrace. Um, I think it's fair to say that was from um, that was a fiscal necessity, frankly. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so my hope is, and I can't remember if I've ever had the opportunity to speak to the membership about it, but you know, my hope in supporting that plan was sometimes you have to pull back, mm -hmm. retrench, strengthen, and then press forward again. And so I, that's how I saw that move. Um, if, I think that doing that at the terrace actually gives us the opportunity to possibly do more than we were doing previously, more shows for Good Speed to be involved with, um, more artists for us to help develop. Um, so yes, all of it's important to me. Okay, great. I important to us. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, if I was going to add really quickly, Dan, you know, it, it gets back to the point I, I made earlier about, you know, having this time, you know, to, to really look at this and how do we recalibrate in ways that are smart, mm -hmm. that are uh, fiscally sound, uh, that still allows us to take risk, you know, uh, that's something that can't go away. We need to take risks. I mean, oh. that's when you see such great work happen is when you take those risks, you know? Well, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, David. No, no, I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, please. For people who have been with us a long time, I'll remind them that Goodspeed had its greatest success when Michael Price was afraid of nothing. Yeah. You know, right. And so, you know, I, I've been here a long time and that, you know, that legacy, that boldness, that, that, um, that not being afraid to take a risk um, because sometimes they pay off big um, is really, really important to me. Um, and so I, I think that um, we, we're gonna have to pull back for a little while. We know that, you know, we're gonna have to be responsible but we're gonna press forward as quickly and as strongly as we can. I hope that answers. It's also exciting. Let's just reopen now. You know, one of the other <laughs> things that I know there's a lot of concern about is when we reopen about safety and you know people are asking the box office as they renew mm -hmm. what are you going to do is it going to be safe how are you going to do it and i thought maybe we could address that a little bit now sure um i'll, I'll take that first david since yes. uh, um so we have we have been having this conversation at the senior staff level since literally the day we left the office because you know we all naively thought we shut down for three weeks and the virus would go away and then we'd all be able to come back to work what do we have to do when we come back to work so so yeah. we have been having this conversation for a long time it has been evolving um continually we are all participating in a lot of um conversations convocations with um with other with colleagues across the country i know dan you're part of a group that's being advised by the yale school of public health um and so and those those best practices are shifting we're learning more um what is becoming available to us in terms of sanitation mm -hmm. is is shifting and evolving and so we have we've been tracking that we we when we come back there will be a a really comprehensive safety plan um for our staff for our cast members and for our audience mm -hmm. um and we will make everything available to our audience so that they understand what has been done, what we are doing, what we expect of them in, in terms of keeping one another safe. Um, I will share that our unions um, are very concerned, particularly the actors union appropriately, very concerned about how actors come back to work safely. Um, so, so we are really, you know, anything we do is really being driven um, from even behind us in terms of making sure that the workplace is safe um, for our company members, as well as for our audience. Absolutely. I don't know, David. Yeah, yeah. The, the only thing I would add is, you know, and just tag on to what you were just saying, Donna Lynn, which is, you know, we're going to, we will communicate with you. We want you to feel safe, you know, and we want to share with you the steps that we're taking. And, uh, you know, we will take your questions. Those are all valid and very welcomed. Um, but it's important to us to create an environment that is safe to create musical yeah. theater, right? Yeah. So, there's a lot that's going on, a lot of conversations we're all having you know, nationwide. Again, yeah. to get back to everybody is impacted by this, literally every theater in America. So, yeah. We, and you know, we can look immediately to the long concerts that we did. Yep. Late I last was gonna summer. bring that up. Yeah. Yep. Um, because we, you know, that was um, a very comprehensive safety plan. Mm -hmm. um, I think the people who came felt that they uh, knew what to expect. I think people felt safe. That's certainly what we heard. Um, and people were safe. We did not have any incidents of, of people um, not being safe. So uh, we know that we can do this. Um, we just have to be really, really smart about it. I'll also share, you know, that in other parts of the world, people have been back in the theater for a long time. 
yeah. um, and, and doing so safely. So yeah. I think, you know, the, the way we think about being in a room together has changed and, and that is going to be true when we get back to work. Um, but um, we will, communication is going to be the key. Yeah, I think it's important for everyone to know that we'll share with you, just like we did for the long content, anyone that came. Mm -hmm. We sent the longest email. You know, I'm in charge of the emails and I do not like long emails. We sent the longest one I've ever seen. And people because, read it. And people read it. Yes, because we wanted you to know and feel safe and be safe and we'll yeah. do the same again. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we don't have all the details yet, but we will. Right. But we're working on it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, how about going past next year <sighs> into the... The great beyond, 2022 and, and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, it's, I, I have gone back and looked at the notes that I took when I first decided to do this job, because, you know, to pursue this job, because it's, um, it's very hard to dream right now. You know, it really can be difficult to build the space to dream. Um, but you know, I have big ideas for good speed. You know, I have, I have big, expansive ideas for good speed. I want to leave good speed better than I found it. And I found it at the height of its glory a long time ago. You know, so I, that's my intention. Um, what what we'll be able to do, I, we don't know yet. David and I have not had much time together, but you know the 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 opera house needs a facelift. <laughs> the old girl's been. It's been a, a long time since the old girl went in, um, and uh, and so there are a lot of great ideas around that. Um, I I want to do more. I know the pandemic is going to make us do less immediately, but I want Goodspeed to be doing more. I want it all to be about what goes on the stage. Um, I, I, I have your big dreams for new work. I have big dreams for partnerships with other theaters. I have um, big dreams for commercial collaborations. I'm, you know, I've already started conversations about a couple of pretty significant revivals that that could be headed to Broadway. And, and commercial producers are in this moment recognizing that what Goodspeed does, taking a massive musical and, and doing it smaller is actually gonna be key to them in their recovery. Awesome. So, um, you know, I think there's just, I really do feel that the sky's the limit. We just have to hunker down, get through this recovery phase so that we can be back strong, robust and, and take it even further. Yeah, you know, I'll share that one of the very first conversations that Donna Lynn and I had back in December, I think it was, was really talking about some of those dreams, you know, and I, I, I it, it was important that that's where we started, yeah. you know, we, we know where we are, and we know the struggles that we face, just like, you know, any nonprofit, any person who's living through this, this, um, hard, you know, difficult time, uh, but, but the vision, you know, of where we want to go, you know, how do we honor who we are, but how do we also embrace the bright future that's ahead for us? And um, I'm really intrigued by that. And, uh, you know, every conversation I'll share, every conversation that Donna Lynn and I've had over these past several weeks, there's always been a piece of that. There's always been a nugget of the artistic content. You know, where are we headed? What are we excited about? What may be something that is germinating right now that we're not gonna see born, uh, for some time, maybe even years. Um, and I think that that work is, is, is really important because we have to also have a place to, to, to go, you know? Right. And, uh, and I, I want our membership to know that that work is happening, even as we're trying to figure out how to be safe, how to come back together, all of those things, that that work is happening at the same time as we go like this, you know? Okay, back to the questions coming in. Okay. These aren't my questions any longer. <laughs> How do the two of you bond when you can't meet face to face? Oh, you know, I, I it, it, so far, I mean, I don't know we're bonded, but, right. but you know, I think it it's pure coincidence that we come from very similar backgrounds. Yeah. Um, David's a little bit younger than I am. <laughs> but, but, you know, I think we just immediately, it, we kind of hit it off. We come, yeah. we, you know, we come from the same kind of people, I think, and we just yeah. sort of hit it off um, immediately. I think we're both pretty optimistic, positive, forward-looking mm -hmm. people. Um, and, um, and we both love dogs and we both mm -hmm. like to garden. Yeah. 
Um, so we, you know, we just, we just sort of found a way to hit it off. I mean, that's what we do. That's as a theater artist, I am at my core collaborator and I'm sure the same is true of David. So no, this is not the ideal way for us to start our relationship, but this is what it is. So you know, let's you get make, to it. Yeah, you make it work. You know, I received a text early this morning from Donna Lynn of her beautiful snow covered backyard. And it actually, it was lovely. It was lovely to see. And and not only because it was beautiful and it's snowy and I'll get to see that snow very soon, but but it, I'll share here very publicly uh, that it was just nice to get a note from my colleague about life, you know, and I, and I think that, that it, it's such a little thing, but it's actually a much bigger thing. And, and it's going to help us do really great work together and to lead our dynamic team uh, to create really wonderful pieces of art. Uh, because we are building this this friendship and this yeah. you know uh, to, uh, becoming you know good colleagues yeah. so uh, I, I will share that I I sent that to I was like oh I'm gonna send David this picture who we talk about you left in the snow you're coming back yeah. in the snow we talked about that and so I sent you I took the picture and I sent it and I was like oh it's 7 <laughs> 15. <laughs> I responded right away because I was up. It was perfect, you know. Yeah, it worked out. Uh, and, and so to share with the membership the little the little tidbit that Donna was saying. So when I left, uh, when Jeff and I left Connecticut the last time, it was in the midst of a pre-blizzard, um, and so we're coming up for a trip here very soon. And uh, and it's looking like snow was going to greet us again. So again, it gets back to this this homecoming of sorts. Uh, so the snow is all your fault, David. I, I don't want to take responsibility for it. <laughs> we needed <laughs> some. Awfully related, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Donald, you mentioned you both like dogs and gardening, but what else do you like to do outside of the theater? I mean, I, I know we all love the theater and spend a lot of time there, but you have other lives. Yeah, I love to travel. Um, I, I, you know, won't get to for a while now. <laughs> but Jay and I, my husband Jay, uh, and I love to travel. We had a trip to Africa planned for this past November that's been put on hold, of course. Um, so I love to travel. I love to, I read biography and journals and memoirs and uh, collections of letters. I say I like to read other people's mail. I love reading collections of letters. If you know of any good ones, please share them with me. Um, and I love to cook. I love to entertain. It's I really can't wait to have guests to the house again. Um, and I and gardening is the thing that keeps me sane. I, and I will say it's the only thing in my life that I can do. And you know everything. The good speed falls away. The you know the cast replacement falls away. The it all falls away. And I can go put my hands in the dirt for for you know thirty minutes and then you know get back at it. It's quite literally grounding, right? I mean, it, it really is. And, you know, I, I share that too. I, you know, I have a, I had a, a grandfather who had a pretty incredible green thumb and, and I, I don't profess to have the same green thumb, uh, but I do love spending time out in a garden, um, even if it's a small patio garden um, as it has been here in, in, in Norfolk. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to that, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. we, when we were in Connecticut last, we spent a lot of time hiking. You know, we love to be in the outdoors and it doesn't matter if it's a beautiful late spring or summer day, you know, we would hike, you know, through the snow and it was still so magnificently beautiful. So uh, we are very much looking forward to that. And, and, and East Haddam is so rich uh, with opportunity, uh, you know, and state, the state park system. And uh, it, it's been fun since, since this all became a reality. Uh, you know, the, the uh, social media is very helpful and you get to start to see a little bit of your town, even if you're not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, and you get excited about where you can get your fresh eggs and you can get excited <laughs> about that stream that you want to go, <laughs> you know, right. um, we're, we're certainly paying attention. <laughs> to yeah. Okay, the next one. What does your spouse think about your long hours at the theater? <laughs> Why don't we start with you, David? Okay, so so peeling back the curtain a little bit for our members. So my spouse actually is, we, we joke, he's a recovering theater person. Uh, he actually uh, has an MFA in directing uh, from Rutgers University, but left the field um, many years ago and now um, does interiors. I mean, he's an interior designer and works for a, a, major, a major corporate label uh, currently. Uh, so he knows the, the, the world um, and yeah, he's a, you know, obviously I'm married to him. He, he's a great spouse, <laughs> a, great, a great spouse for a theater person. He gets it. You know, he understands the hours. He understands 
you know, when we're in tech that, you know, if he's going to see me, he's probably going to have to come to the theater, uh, you know, and, and, and enjoys that, you know, and enjoys meeting the artist. You know, it's important to us, you know, to find a home where we can entertain as well, you know, like Donna Lynn and, and Jay, we, we enjoy welcoming artists to our home, especially when they pick up their lives and they come stay with us for several weeks, uh, you know, in our, in our community. And, and we want them to feel welcomed and, and appreciated and really connected to the fabric of our, you know, our, our organization. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'm fortunate that I have a, a spouse who um, not only has an incredible design aesthetic, uh, but but also just richly understands uh, the, the nature of our work. Yeah. Uh, so Donald, my, it's a little easier for you to answer. Yeah, that. I mean, he works. At, he, my husband works at good speed, um, and so uh, <laughs> and he always says that I'm meaner to him than I am to anybody else. <laughs> 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 which I don't think is true, but, but, you know, so, so he understands the world, you know, it has made life difficult that sometimes in our long, in our long marriage, it's not easy for us both to be that, in, you know, that intensely focused on the same thing um, at the same time, but we, you know, it's really all we've ever known. We, we met working together, we married working together and we've stayed married working together. So, so I think that um, I, I will tell you, I will say this publicly, this pandemic has, if it's taught me anything, it has taught me that I married the right person. Yeah. <laughs> I can vouch for the same. Yep, absolutely. I would agree too. <laughs> okay, last one, because we're running out of time. And I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. We are going to have future member events with both of our leaders. So, you know, we'll, we'll work through all these. Well, and I'm happy to, if people want to email me, I'm happy to. Yeah, same. So Donna at goodspeed.org, I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, last one, favorite musical of all time. Oh, that's Dave. like asking you to pick a child. Oh, I can't do on, that. <laughs> favorite musical of all time. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, we, Goodspeed produced Showboat, that revival of Showboat, because it is one of my favorites. And I knew that it could be as, honestly, as magnificent in that room as it ended up being. Um, so, I, I, you know, there's some others like that that I would love to be able to do eventually. Um, but that Showboat, I guess, was, you know, is my, my, my favorite okay. show. If you're making me it. choose one of my children. Yes. Yeah, yes. exactly. It is hard to answer. I'm going to cheat, actually. I'm not going <laughs> to answer the question. So the very first musical I ever worked on was Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, I love that. Huge show, right? Uh, and a great entree in. And I was a wee little one at the time, uh, you know. But if I think about, you know, I like to think about our work, uh, in in terms of like what what's so impactful for you. And I think our members will get this too, where where you'll take an experience of attending a you know a musical and you you kind of tuck it in your pocket and you carry carry it with you forever. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about it that way. And if I do that, sometimes it's actually some of the smaller musicals, you know, Fun Home, the, the experience I had seeing, uh, you know, Lisa Crone's work and Janine Tesori's work on stage and just the impact it had on me personally, but also I actually first saw it in taking a group of donors uh, when I was managing a theater in Knoxville to see, to see that work and to witness their witnessing that work was pretty profound. Um, I had a similar experience with Violet, another Janine Tesori, um, a tie, you know, tie in there. Uh, but also, you know, we have something coming up that, uh, that we really are, are excited about in South Pacific. One of the most, you know, incredible experiences I've ever had was producing a pretty grand production of South Pacific. So it is hard to pick. It's really hard to pick. It's but really it's hard. Not a great problem to have, too. You know. That is. Yeah. 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 Well, and you, know, I can honestly say, I think I'll I'll think about this a little further, and then we'll put it in a curtain or something. I, once I've worked on a show, mm. you know, once I've really gotten into a show, once it, I'm in it up to my elbows, I, I love you know I love them all. You yeah. know, the pr the process of creating a show is just. Mm -hmm thrilling and fun and satisfying. So I just love musical theater. It's a great space to be in. All right, so our time's up. Okay. Any last thoughts that either of you would like to share? I will just say thank you to, especially our members, but to anybody who's watching tonight, but to our members, because you all have sustained us during this year, um, honestly, above and beyond. Um, in terms of what we would have expected. And you've really 
may, you've reminded us that we matter in your lives, that we matter in your community, that we matter in the region, in the state. Um, and I just really feel that deeply as I take on this new position. Um, your good speed is going to be here and it's going to be strong and you're going to be happy with it. And we're going to be in the room with you um, every time you come. And I look forward to, to seeing you. We're going to get back to it. Absolutely. All everything Donalyn just said, I, we, we, we can't thank you enough. And we know that your support will continue. And that's, that's hugely impactful. And that that allows us the time to figure out what getting back in our theaters looks like, yeah. and how we can present, you know, produce musicals in a way that is not only safe, but important and impactful. We know that you miss it. And that means a lot to us. And we actually carry that yeah. with us as well. Yeah. So thanks for the continued support. And, and selfishly, personally, I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you either. <laughs> oh, you're not talking to me. No. <laughs> It goes but you know, them. Dan, it, you know, so many members, because I get a daily report. Yeah. We, we were worried, are people going to renew? Yeah. People have increased their membership. So many people. It's just to know that people understand what we're up against right now. Um, is, is I get misty thinking about I, yeah. You yeah. Know, the thought that, 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 that all of you, what have you have done for, for us? And and I think it speaks to how David and your words, we're all a community. Like we're all in this together. Right. We don't just put this out there and you come and leave. It's all interactive. Yeah. And so, you know, that just really, it, it reminds us of that, I think. And it makes us want to work harder for you, for ourselves, so we can bring these beautiful shows back to life. Absolutely. That's true. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all Thank so much for being thanks here. Thanks for right? staying. Stay I, you know, safe. Yes. Yes, please. Get we'll your be vaccine. Back. We'll, yeah. Yes. Well, more information about next month's uh, member um, insider event in an, in an upcoming email. Don't forget, you can watch our past episodes of Great Speed now. Go to the website. They're there. And um, soon we'll see you at the theater. Absolutely. Have Stay a great safe, everybody. Be well.